Most radiation delivered in the U.S. for head and neck cancer now is probably IMRT. The standard fractionation scheme for this is 70 gray, given in 35 fractions, or in plainer English, Monday to Friday for seven weeks. Um, for the patient, however, who is not able to get systemic therapy for one reason or another, there is solid data to support the use of BID radiation with at least six hours between the fractions. So radiation therapy uh, is a, uh, an important modality in head and neck cancer. Uh, I alluded to its use postoperatively. It can also be used uh, in the upfront setting as a curative treatment for early stage disease or in combination with chemotherapy for uh, advanced stage. Uh, radiation therapy uh, used to be very nonspecific, very non-targeted, uh, and led to exposure of the radiation beam to the larger areas of the important structures of the head and neck than really were necessary. <clears throat> but that was because the technology had not been developed to use computer-assisted and three-dimensional conformal imaging. We now uh, have, uh, with our radiation therapy colleagues, the ability to use CAT scans and, and even PET-CT scans importing these data into the radiation treatment planning to use three-dimensional uh, conformal or so-called image-guided radiation therapy and intensity modulated radiation therapy where different portions of the anatomy where the tumor may affect can get higher doses and have a very quick and steep drop-off so that normal tissue uh, is not uh, radiated uh, as much as in, in uh, as we say, the old days before we had the IMRT or IGRT, uh, image-guided radiation therapy. So these advances have dramatically improved uh, the functional uh, uh, outcomes while maintaining the same cure rates because ultimately the radiation just needs to get to the tumor cell and we'd prefer not to have it really extend uh, to the normal tissues surrounding. As technology advanced for radiation therapy, there was concern that conformal modalities uh, might have some uh, marginal misses, as we say, at the edge or the margin of the tumor, and that in, in the uh, zeal, uh, in the effort to reduce uh, off-target effects and uh, uh, normal tissue radiation effects, that we would not treat the tumor itself. Fortunately, with high-resolution uh, scanning, that's not really been the case. Now, there is an issue with uh, uh, quality assurance. And just like surgeons have been subjected to, for years uh, to the vagaries of, of quality, and some surgeons have so-called good hands and others maybe weren't as high volume and uh, not able to retain normal tissues while getting all of the tumor out, we now find that our radiation uh, oncologists have the same problem, that uh, it takes really high quality, high volume surgeons with good imaging, high quality imaging, to do the conformal uh, associated radiation therapy that uh, avoids missing the tumor and makes sure that uh, the conformal imaging is used to hit the tumor but not the normal tissues. Uh, and so quality assurance is an important part of that. One of the uh, technological uh, uh, developments in radiation therapy uh, has been the use of uh, alternate particles. Uh, instead of uh, photons or electrons, uh, the proton therapy was developed. Uh, I'm not a radiation oncologist, but some of the characteristics uh, that are beneficial of proton therapy is the ability uh, to have a very steep, quick drop-off in areas, for instance, at the base of the skull. Uh, where uh, tumors may be very adjacent to some important neural structures, cranial nerves, the brain, uh, and other aspects that we would not want to radiate. So those are the areas that proton therapy uh, appears to be uh, most useful for at present. However, there's no uh, definitive study really saying that proton therapy is better than electron or, or photon traditional radiation therapy. And so uh, I think at present it's an investigational uh, instrument uh, that is being used effectively, quite effectively, by those uh, who are experienced. Because it's quite an expensive device, it's not available at every center. There are certain centers that have spent uh, and invested uh, that, that amount. Those are the ones that tend to use it more frequently, uh, but it's only recently that studies have uh, opened up 
that allow us to actually compare it to traditional modalities, which I think is necessary. As I mentioned, radiation therapy is effective oncologically, uh, but it does have certain side effects that are characteristic, uh, particularly in the head and neck. Xerostomia and uh, injury to the salivary tissues is one of the key. It turns out that uh, although uh, a dose of 60 or 70 gray of radiation is necessary to kill a cancer, a head and neck tumor, it's really only 20 or 30 gray uh, at which point you knock off and, and injure the salivary gland tissues. And so uh, in the course of uh, treatment, uh, often uh, a dry mouth, uh, a susceptibility to, to cavities and caries, uh, and other features because saliva has many functions in the mouth, not just lubrication and eating and helping the bolus go down for swallowing, but also, uh, you know, uh, immune functions and, and antibodies and other features are present in saliva. Radiation therapy can cause uh, fibrosis, uh, scar tissue, uh, and often replacing muscle that surrounds uh, a region that has, uh, that's tumor infiltrated. And so when, when you heal, just like when you heal from surgery, a scar is laid down. Non-surgical therapy induces fibrosis, sometimes abnormal scar tissue. And if the scar, scar tissue uh, replaces muscle, then you don't have flexible, pliable, mobile tissues, uh, which we know swallowing requires flexible, pliable, mobile uh, muscular tissues. Uh, and then you uh, create a, a fixed uh, edematous and frozen portion of the anatomy, and so swallowing is another major uh, portion, uh, uh, major functional side effect, particularly long term. Acute effects uh, such as sores, mucositis, uh, and uh, uh, the breakdown of the lining of the mouth uh, leads to pain, pain and, and sores. Usually the, this uh, goes away uh, within weeks or months uh, of the radiation therapy, uh, and it's worsened by chemotherapy. Uh, but that's really the main acute effect.